Now again, direct your attention to the screen for the introduction of tonight's second inductee. Robert Lee Gibson was born October 30th, 1946, in Cooperstown, New York, and grew up in Lakewood, California. His love of flying developed early because his father was a test pilot for the Civil Aeronautics Administration and later an inspector for the FAA. He frequently accompanied his dad on business, and his father was also his flight instructor. Gibson soloed on his 16th birthday and got his pilot's license the next year. Robert L. Gibson graduated from California Polytechnic State University with a B.S. in Aeronautical Engineering in 1969 and joined the Navy, earning his wings of gold. He flew combat missions in the F-4 Phantom off the USS Coral Sea and USS Enterprise in Southeast Asia. In 1972, he graduated from Navy Fighter Weapons Top Gun School with the call sign Hoot. During three deployments in Southeast Asia, the last of which was flying the new F-14, Gibson made over 300 carrier landings. In 1975, he returned to Miramar as an F-14A instructor and then attended U.S. Naval Test Pilot School. After graduation in 1977, he was assigned to the Naval Air Test Center's Strike Aircraft Test Directorate, testing and evaluating improvements to the F-14. In 1978, Hoot was selected for the astronaut program, joining NASA's 8th astronaut group, where he met fellow astronaut Dr. Ray Seddon. They were married in May 1981. Astronaut Gibson's first trip into space was as pilot on STS-41B, launched February 3, 1984. Its return to Earth was the first shuttle runway landing at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Hoot commanded four of the five space shuttle missions he flew. They carried satellites, DOD payloads, and science laboratories aboard space shuttles Challenger, Columbia, Atlantis, and Endeavour. After 18 years, he left NASA in November 1996. The next 10 years were spent flying as a captain for Southwest Airlines, forced at age 60 to retire in October 2006. Air and Space Magazine characterized Hoot Gibson as the man who's flown everything, and his logbook with more than 14,000 hours of flying time just keeps climbing. Hoot's insatiable need for speed in September 2015 earned him the gold at the Reno Air Races, piloting the P-51D Mustang Strega that covered the course at a speed of 488.983 miles per hour. For extraordinary achievement and service to aviation for Tennessee, our nation, and the world, and for his service to our country, Robert Lee Hoot Gibson is honored by and inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame this seventh day of November 2015. And I am proud to present to you Mr. Robert L. Hoot Gibson and his wife, Ray Seddon. As we've already noticed, Ray is already an inductee into the Hall of Fame.
Very good. Well, Ray has pointed out to me for the last 10 years how she was already inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame. And uh, I'm thrilled tonight to be joining her in the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame. She tells me all the time that I have lived a charmed life. Tonight I really feel like I have been living a charmed life. I feel very much charmed tonight. I got to do so many fun things in the course of my aviation career. One of the most fun being I got to be a jet fighter pilot. And one of the jet fighter pilots who really inspired me, who I met very early in my career, is a fellow Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame inductee, Admiral Jimmy Taylor, who's here tonight. Jimmy, where are you? JW. Way back over here. Um, Admiral Taylor also pointed out to me uh, a couple months ago that he had been inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame ahead of me as well. One of the things that was really fun about being a fighter pilot was it really took quite a bit of confidence in yourself to fly a 50 to 60,000 pound jet fighter on and off of an aircraft carrier. Um, confidence to the extent that uh, some people would have a tendency to call it arrogance. And the sort of arrogance that if you suddenly found yourself in a dogfight with five MiGs and you're all by yourself in your jet fighter, you would say to yourself, this is fantastic. I'm going to be an ace in one dogfight. I'm going to shoot down all five of them. That's the kind of, well, I don't know what, overconfidence that you had to have as a fighter pilot. Um, we had a few mottos that we used very extensively. Uh, one of them, there are no points for second place in a dogfight. And in fact, uh, Admiral Taylor starred in a movie uh, about the F-14 Tomcat called No Points for Second Place, which is one of our models. You don't want to come in second place in a dogfight. We had some other models as well. Anything worth having is worth cheating for. <laughs> if you're not cheating, you're not trying hard enough. It isn't whether you win or lose, it's whether you win. These were some of the attitudes and the behaviors that you learned as a fighter pilot. And that's why we all look so arrogant to everybody that's around us, including my wife, uh, who also has pointed out to me for quite a few years that she was already inducted into the Tennessee Aviation <laughs> Hall of Fame. Well, after I got to be a fighter pilot, I got to do something really exciting. I got to join NASA in their first class of space shuttle astronauts. And that's where I met my beautiful wife, Ray. And as she mentioned, we married in 1981, so we've just passed 34 years. And, and I like to joke around and say, the reason we have been able to stay married so long is because I'm so easy to get along with. Nope, that's not it. She is so easy to get along with. So Ray, thank you. Thank you for 34 wonderful years. We had a few mottos as astronauts as well. Uh, one of them was better dead than look bad. Uh, another one, another one was the astronauts' prayer, and astronauts actually do prayer, uh, do pray. Um, I know sitting on the launch pad, I've said quite a few prayers. Uh, help me through this day. I shall be very busy this day. I may forget thee, but do not thou forget me. But we had some other prayers too. And one of those was, dear God, please don't let me screw this up. <laughs> that was one of our prayers. And then I didn't even know there was another prayer, but I learned it from the chief astronaut, um, whose name is Dan Brandenstein, as I was going out for my third mission. And this was my second time as the mission commander. And as he gets off the crew van and says goodbye to all of us, 
He said, okay, I want you all to bow your heads for a moment for a prayer. And I've never seen that before. That had never happened before. And so we all bowed our head. And he said this prayer. He said, may the Lord help you if you guys screw this up. <laughs> so that was another one of the astronaut prayers uh, that we got to learn. Well, I have one more story for you, and, and it's a very short one. Uh, Ray and I spoke at the Tennessee Airport Conference uh, earlier this year, and it's kind of ironic, but that morning as we were getting dressed and getting ready to go to talk, to give a talk at the Tennessee Airports Conference, Ray had asked me, she said, do you, do you think you'll be inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame at some point? And I said, no, no, that's not going to happen. I said, I'm, I'm not from here. I'm not from Tennessee. I'm not going to be inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame. At the conference, after Ray and I had given our talk, John Black got up and announced to the whole world that I'm to be inducted into the Tennessee Aviation Hall of Fame. So I am just tonight so very grateful to all of you for this terrific honor. And I am so very grateful to all of you for adopting me into the state of Tennessee, to the great state of Tennessee. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and good night.